Rachel here from Beads by Virgil bringing you this Thursday tutorial. Still can't remember it, can I? How are you all doing? Do pop me a note in the comments so I know you were present. I'm just looking to see whether or not I can see your comments. So as always, do give me a thumbs up and do pop me a note in the comments so that I know you were present with me. And also, for those of you that join me regularly, you will know, others won't, that I always do a giveaway as well on a Thursday. Oh, there's my note. There's my comments. I have to swipe across. Hello, Janet. Hello, Sharon. Hello, Francis. Hope you're all doing well. What projects have you all been working on? Hi, Lisa. Hi, Carol. Oh, you're very welcome, Carol. I'm glad it arrived. And I'm super chuffed because I've got all of my packaging up to date today. Hello, Betsy. Hello, Jane. And so that's all my Hotchanda orders and all of my orders in the group for all of the ones paid up to date. So now I'm getting all the kits ready for next week um, because a week on Saturday, I'll be back in Peterborough again. So quite excited, but obviously I've got so much work to do, but I cannot complain because I am doing what I love. So while we're waiting for people to join, let's give you a little sneaky peek of what we're doing tonight. Hello Anne. Hello Lulu. Oh, Lulu says her cat got comfy on her lap so she hasn't got her bits ready. Oh cats when they decide that you're not doing any beading that's it isn't it. Carol has been knitting for a neonatal baby hat. Oh that's lovely. I can't knit. Well, I say I can't knit. I've not actually tried knitting. I've tried crocheting. But um, there's lots of things I'd like to do, but probably like you all, it's whether or not you do more crafts or um, whether you've got the time to do it. So this, let's get in a bit closer. So this is tonight's tutorial. Now, I know a lot of you in the group have already done bead embroidery. So I was thinking, what can I do to make it new? for you that have done bead embroidery and also something that's easy enough for a beginner to try as well. So what I've done is I've incorporated something called super duos, which some of you may be aware of already. They're beads that have two holes in them. Um, when we zoom in, I can show you. And we're also gonna learn how to what we call peyote which is around a cabochon. So because we're doing a little peyote, which is a little stitch, um, we can actually just use sticky back um, tape rather than glue for this because the stitch will actually hold it in place. So you can either use it for a pendant and you can have a glue on bail on the back. Hello, Deb. Or you could use one of the charms that I've got or the charms that you may have at home. I've got these bag charms in the group and use it as one for a bag attachment. You probably can't see that very well, but these are all tree of life cabochons. Now, would you believe they are so tiny? I think they're about 12 mil. But by the time you've done all the edging round, you've got quite a, a nice size pendant. Anne said she would love to. Do you mean knitting? Try needle punch. Yes. <laughs> I know you've tried that, Anne. Oh, the other thing I want to show you as well. Excuse me, being out of sight for a second. First of all, is to show you this is a slightly bigger tree of life, but this is a little brooch that I did using the same technique, but without the super duos. Now, the super duo beads are fab for creating this 3D effect as well. So whilst we're not doing this tonight, 
let me know in the thread if it's something you want to do but can you see how built up that is so this is a soda like cabochon and what i've done is i've got super duo beads and i've kind of pulled them in so that you create a nice thickness around it as well so um that i rather like and you've got um some brick is it brick stitch yes i'm not sure if it's brick stitch no i think it's possibly just a pico stitch around the side so that's another thing so let me know in the comments if that's something you might like to do i know soda light's beautiful isn't it i love i love soda light oh i'm glad you like the pendant hello nora it's good to have you right i think because it's a slightly longer project than normal i am gonna go and get started but before i get started i think it's really important to just outline what materials we're going to be using for this hello june i'm glad you like that carol right okay so i'm gonna go straight from scratch presuming that you've never done it before so that way it will allow for everybody regardless of your skills to to know where i'm coming from so first of all we're using this beading foundation which is just like a thick um base that we actually sew onto now i've got some pieces that i think are five by seven for one pound fifty but if you want any scraps this size and you want a little sort of five or six of them um, then I can do a little bundle for 50 pence if you just want the small ones. Pop me a note um, in the comment thread because I've got lots of leftover little bits um, on that one. The other thing you're going to need is some beading thread. Now I've just put some cream Nymo beading thread on there on the thread as well, thread on the thread. Um, and that you can use for this project as well and it's a good neutral colour as well you'll need a size 10 beading needle so that you can get your um, size 10 and size 15 seed beads so moving on to that you need a cabochon which is basically um, a glass dome without any holes in it the other ones that are in the thread i think there's still some of this left are these as well they're the domed ones and it looks like green but there's lots of iridescent colours they're 50 pence each or you can buy a bundle of the tree of life ones for a pound i'm using the super duo beads as well with the two holes we're getting closer i've got three size 10 colours but you can use as many colours as you want and size 15 seed beads so the higher the seed bead number the smaller they are the other thing i would suggest as well is beading wax um, it really helps to make things easier to stop your thread from splitting to make it easier to thread your needle and i've nearly sold out i haven't got huge amounts left so do have a look they're only two pound 95 plus your postage so first things first now what did i do with that oh there it is my spare cabochon so we'll do this before i zoom in now i'm going to cut a bit of double-sided sticky tape so that's available in all sorts of craft shops like the works and i'm just popping that on my double-sided tape do not use your best scissors because it ruins them but basically cut off the excess tape you see it's not best for your scissors and then peel off the back layer and then pop your cabochon in the center you don't need it to be very wide and i'm going to cut some of that off um, the other thing that i'd recommend as well is actually curving the corners so that it stops you from getting stuck around all the corners with all of your beading thread so let's zoom in 
I am going to move all of this rubbish out of the way. Betty says she just moved and she can't find her beads. Oh no, that's not good. Right, I need thread. I'm going to get my needle threaded first of all. I'm using KO thread. It's one of my favourites to use. Um, I'd work with just over a metre if you can. All I do for the beading wax is these little grooves that are in here is just pull it through. You can actually um, take it apart as well. So you can take it apart and do it that way if you want to. And I certainly learned the hard way because when I was doing a demonstration on Hochanda, not this time, but the last time I was doing a demonstration on the hedgehog and I hadn't waxed my beading thread and it kept coming unthreaded my needle, which was a bit of a nightmare when you were on live TV. Oh, that's a good idea, Anne. You've done that before, haven't you? She said, um, Betsy, I would have packed beads with a coffee, so I had essentials to hand. Good call. Right, OK. Let's zoom in then. This just takes a little bit. I'm going to swipe away your comments, but please do keep the comments coming whilst I'm beading because I'm going to come back to them after and I'm sorry it's upside down to you let's just get in a little bit more I don't like to zoom in huge amounts because I go off screen I get so engrossed in the project so we've got a triple knot on the bottom and we're going to bring our needle just about a millimeter from the side of the cabochon it's perhaps a little bit too far away but it'll be okay and we're going to work in even groups because we're doing what's called even count peyote, which means we need an even number of beads to work with. So I would lie that round your cabochon, take a nosedive in the middle. So basically take a nosedive at the end of the last seed bead. still keeping about a millimetre away. Let's turn over to the back now. We're going to back stitch, so pop your needle through that knot that you from where you just threaded. Push your needle through all four seed beads and add another four. Now if you're not doing peyote you can work in odd numbers but I wouldn't recommend it for peyote. Like I say, you'll end up with the wrong number of beads and it won't work. So take a nose dive. It'll all become clearer. Right, so we go to the back. Go to the last stitch. Push your needle all the way through. Let's just make sure I'm showing you what I'm doing. Now, don't worry if you cabbage on sort of comes up a little bit because we're going to enclose that in a second but if you've got any top tips because I know a lot of you in the group have done bead embroidery and I think it's great to share top tips we all learn from each other back stitch into the last hole so this comprises of back stitching Pushing through the four beads you've just added. But you see how quickly it comes together. Now I have actually done a few um, fast forward pieces because I'm not sure how we're going to do time wise. So let's just bear with me to see so I'm back stitching now I don't expect you to do that this 
I don't expect you to do it so quickly. You have to bear in mind that I do a lot of these. Um, also, do not worry if your vision's not great. I'd say probably best don't bead at night unless you've got a super duper lamp because daylight is much better. If you are beading at night time, I would say have one of these um, angle headed lamps that you can use and you can get one of the magnifiers in there as well. Right, so we've got four that fit. So you need to get an even number to fit. Ouch, and try not to stab yourself in the process. Now the next thing we're going to do is reinforce all of that. Now what we're going to reinforce is all of it. So go all the way through, push your needle, doesn't have to be all at once because that would be pretty impossible to go all through your beads. What that does is it helps to line it up and make them more uniform. Now I should have said that I'm using a size 10 seed bead here. See, it's getting stuck around everything now. So that's our first stage. And now what we're going to do is peyote. So I am just going to put those away. And I'm going to use a size 15 seed bead. So these are super tiny, but you can thread these on by touch. So, you know, don't strain your eyes. You don't need to do that. So add on a bead. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so that you can see. Add on a bead. Skip over this bead here and go through the next one get that more central now I would leave them sitting on the outside and don't pull too tight add one miss that one and go through the next one so we do that all the way around add one so basically you are I'm getting stuck around everything here just moving a couple of bits When I say add one, add a seed bead on, skip, so where your thread's coming out, skip the one next to it and go through the next seed bead. Try and avoid going through the middle of your thread because it will make it sit a little bit skew if. I want to show you the whole of this row because I want to show you what stepping up is is what it means stepping up is something that happens at the end of the row the other thing to mention is if you're new to this i use a lot of czechoslovakian and Toho beads. Those are the brand names. Czechoslovakian is a company called Pocosa, Czech Pocosa, obviously based in Czechoslovakia. Um, you don't really want to use Chinese beads because, um, you know, standard non-branded Chinese beads because they're in a regular shape. So though I use those brands because I like the colours and I like how they're quite uniform. There is another brand as well called Mayuki that are beautiful to work with. Right, so on this last bit here, right, I think that's my maximum zoom in. We're going to miss a bead as we would before and go through this one. Now our thread is coming out right next to the first one. So we're going to go into that and that's what we call a step up. And now we're going to add another layer of 15 beads, but this time 
we're going to actually just go through the ones we've just added. So I'm adding a bead and I'm going through the 15 we've just added. And now I'm going to start pulling them towards the centre. Add a bead, go through the next one and start to pull in as you go. The reason why I'm going down to the 15s is because it gives a better snug fit around your cabochon. Add one, go through one. Add one, go through one. Okie dokie. So, but if there's any, sorry, any jargon that I'm using, anything you're not sure of, do just pop me a note in the comments. Now, I haven't done any kits for these because I'm just so tight pressed on time at the moment. But what I've done is for the twin super duo beads, I've made some small bundles up. And each colour will be enough to make two pendants because you only need 12 super duos in this pattern. Now, I've missed one, so hopefully I'm going to be able to go back. There we go. That doesn't always work, by the way. <laughs> Sometimes you have to re-thread your needle. Okay, so we're going through the last one and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reinforce it. So can you see how I pull that and how nicely that comes in? Right, I'm going round. Sometimes when you've got really super tiny seed beads like this, they're made differently and some of the holes are smaller than others. So you may not be able to get your needle through more than once, but let me just show that to you. So that has really given it some framing. Now, the next bit that we're going to do, let me just find the pendant, is so we have just done this bit in the middle. We're now going to start adding these twin beads, the gold here. So there's gold and black diamond. So I'm going to take a nose dive down, sorry, down through my foundation, through those beads. Now I've got a slightly different colour here to the one I'm going to switch to. And these I'm going to use um, a what's called the Terra Lilac coloured ones. So I'm going to position my needle about a millimetre away again. Now some of these seed beads have raised up a little bit but what we could do to flatten that is reinforce it. So what I've done is I've added one seed, one twin bead and a seed. Let me just pop these in my hand so that you can see what they look like. So you've got one hole this side and one hole that side and we will be using both holes in this process eventually. So lay that round the side and we're going to do it in exactly the same way but we're going to work in groups of three. So turn back, 
and do your reinforcing. Now the pattern that you want to follow is so is seed bead duo seed bead. So as there's a seed bead there, we're going to go duo seed bead duo. I'm just calling the super duos duo. Okay. Take a nose dive down. Turn over, back stitch just through those three and go forward. And again, seed bead, twin bead, seed bead. Now the ones I'm using here are called mini duos and I think I might just need a few more of those. But I'm going to switch to super duos which are the same but just slightly wider. Right, so I am going to fast forward now, but I'm going to give you a little close up of that. So that's how they sit at the moment. So let's just switch to my other one. Let's take that out the way. And oh yeah, I still have a needle on there. Right, so these are the metallic purple and these are in a bundle with um, the blue ones and blue and the hematite, I think. Looks like a little sunflower. I suppose you could even keep it just open like that, couldn't you? So we're skipping along. It's exactly the same. It's just the fact that I'm just saving a little bit of time in showing you. And obviously you need to make sure that it all fits as well. So in the last one, I'm going to do a seed bead and a twin bead, and that should fit in nicely into that gap there. OK, what I'd recommend you do is I would recommend that you reinforce all the way round. But we haven't really got time for that because I'm just conscious of time scales. So that's where we're at at the moment. Now let's just refer back to our pendant. Now, so the gold ones in this are the super duos on this one. What we're going to do now is a final row before we do the pico edging. And what we're doing is we're adding one size 10 in one gap and two in the other. But I will show you as we go along. So what you want to do is come out of the bottom of one of the twin beads, push through the twin bead and step up into the second hole. That will just make sure you are in the right place. And what beads should we do? So we'll use these silver line purple ones now. Let's just move some of these seed beads out of the way. So I've got two seed beads and I'm going through. And what I'd recommend you do is you could probably do two seed beads, then one seed bead and then take a nose dive down to anchor it to your foundation and then back stitch so we'll back stitch 
to the start of that group. So you go all the way through those. Add two, go through the top hole. Add one, go through the top hole. And then take a nose dive down. If you find that the twin hole beads just back stitch into the last hole, you know, you, you might find you need to do a little bit of tweaking. So if you find that there's sort of more gaps appearing, for example, you can just go back and fill in with more seed beads. But that's what I found worked with these. So hopefully that's all flowing OK for you at the moment. But do pop me a note in the comments. Is that flowing OK for you so far? I am going to get round to popping all of these tutorials on Facebook. Um, like I mentioned to you before, is I don't have time to edit them anymore because they take quite a few hours to edit. So I think what I would do is put a note at the front to say how far into the into the live is the actual tutorial so that you can shimmy along and go just to the tutorial and you don't have to listen to the chat if you want to refer back to it but if there's anything in particular you need to have reference to online do let me know and i'll um, make it a priority to pop on there But it's amazing how quickly, one, two, how quickly this all comes together. Right, I might need two. Add another two at the end as well. Mm. There we go. And then what I'd recommend you do is reinforce all the way around what i'm just going to do is i'm just going to trim around here and then i'm going to show you how we do a pico so keep your thread out the way i always trim from the back and with the pico because it's going to cover some of your thread you don't have to get in quite perhaps as close as you would normally. Oops, off camera again. Right. I take a little bit more time in, in trimming that off. Now, for a pico, what we actually want to do is to thread three beads on at a time. So let's just pop some of these beads away because I'm getting in a bit of a mix, in a bit of a mix. Nearly there. Right, I quite like the idea of having some of these lighter beads here. So come out of come out of one of the top beads, miss a bead, so count the super duos as well. Right, that's, I'm going the wrong way here. 
that's why it's not working I think bear with me I've just not anchored it at the top and it's not sitting right let's bring that out but we're very nearly there and that's not been too bad time wise so pico is literally these little pretty bits at the side so miss one and go through one so we'll count the super duos as a bead so add three onto your needle miss the next bead and go through that one and just repeat that so you count the super duo as a bead So effectively what you're doing is you're stitching three beads so that they sit. Now you can probably see some of them aren't sitting that great and I'll tell you why that is because it's very possible that I have split some of my thread. So when you get that happening it's very possible that you have actually gone into your thread at a funny angle but whilst it's not ideal on a tutorial it's good to show you why let's keep going this one oh i've done four there i don't want four i'm going to keep going while we're still okay for time right so say for example you can't get it out and undone just pull that off undo the needle re-thread your needle and continue that's the easiest way of doing it because sometimes you can't just go back through it The other thing you could do as well is if you want um, perhaps a less predominant pico, because obviously it is quite frilly, is you could always use smaller seed beads as well, like go down to your 15s or maybe even your, your size 10s as well. Obviously, if I was doing this in <laughs> in my own time, so to speak, and not live on camera, I would be taking a lot more care over doing it. I just want you to get the idea. And I'm hoping that because I've added a few extra beads in, I am just hoping that it's going to work at the end. Excuse me. Going off screen there. Not quite sure what I've dropped. The other thing I just wanted to mention is whilst I recommend ultra suede for the back in, ultra suede is beautiful, but ultra suede can actually be quite expensive and it's not that easy to source at the moment. Um, I can send you links to a site on eBay where I buy mine from, but what I found is that I've actually started buying um, faux leather and it's faux leather that you can use as a fabric in sewing as well and um, it's a really nice sort of backing. Um, I wouldn't recommend felt because from my experience felt oh, it just makes you if you've got sensitive skin it just makes your skin itch. Oh yes, it's worked out. Brilliant. Right. Just one left to do. And I'll show you how to tie off as well. 
so you should end up going through the first one now if you want to neaten that up a bit you can reinforce it by going all the way back round again but I'm just going to show you how to tie up so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to step in down into the second hole and I'm just going to go into the back of my foundation now I'm going to pop my needle underneath one of the thread bars and pick up about a millimetre of thread and before you pull the loop tie a knot then go along to another part do the same and tie a knot I think two is enough but you can always do a third one if you want to so you can either trim that off with your scissors or a thread zapper if you've got a thread zapper that's just like a heated little instrument that cuts your thread now what I would do this is ultra suede I don't have much of it left I don't have any for sale is I would pop E6000 on here but don't overfill it pop E6000 on then trim and you can put a seed bead bale on there if you want to but um, you can actually glue on these are bales they look like little spoons don't they and this bit is for your um, chain to go in or if you are let me just take off the bag charm or if you're doing this one I've just put a jump ring and attached this um, swivel key ring so what you do is you actually lay the spoon a pop e6000 in the spoon element but again not too much and find the midpoint and glue it on the back like that and that's how it comes out <coughs> excuse me so I do have some bales in there, but if you want any smaller ones, I've got smaller ones. They just aren't in the thread. So I'm going to come back to you, see if you've got any questions. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I'm just going to grab some water. Yes, felt would probably rub on your clothes as well. Thank you, Deb. She says it lo looks lovely. June says she uses faux leather and ultra, ultra suede, depending on the colour you have. Absolutely. The, the faux leather is really beautiful stuff. And I kind of think if it's a colour, if I get a batch of colours, I can use some of it in my um, handbag making that I do as well. OK, bless you. She says you're an inspiration. Thank you, Kay, and thank you, Lydia. She loves it. Francis says beautiful. And June says the one I did last week, I brick stitched the edge to neaten it, then pico edged it. Oh, very. Hadn't thought of doing both. What a great idea. Perhaps you can share a picture in the um, January make thread. Oh, my goodness, we're nearly into February, aren't we? Um, so, let me know if you think you might give it a go let me know if you've learned anything new and perhaps for future ref perhaps you might like to see a tutorial on how we do the edging around a cabochon with super duos as well now obviously you can go big with this if you want to you can use your gemstone cabochons if you've done a resin workshop with me or you do resin stuff, we've done resin cabochons before where you can make all this wonderful array of colours. Oh, it's already in there. Fabulous. You have to point it out to me. Um, Sandra. Hello, Sandra. We'll have a go at this. Love the colours. I love purple. I know. I know I'm not alone with that. I know there's a lot of purple lovers. And Deb says she's learnt a lot. Thank you. I'm glad you've learnt a lot there. Let me just, now that we've got 
that sort of done and demoed it'll probably be a bit clearer for you now as to what all these components mean so you've got your glue bale there you've got obviously your peyote the gold you unless you're sewing it and you've seen the demo you probably wouldn't know that those are twin 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 whole beads uh, Nora says she will have a go Janet says good tutorial I'm glad you enjoyed it um, I know Janet um, does a lot of um, bead embroidery as does Nora, June and many others of you in the thread so perhaps let me know if you've done any bead embroidery using the super duo beads as well um, but if there are any any tutorials that I've done that you think would work quite well for kits on Hochanda, perhaps you could let me know what you think are your favourites. Um, that would be a real use. I meant to show you as well, for those of you that missed it, was it last? It was last Thursday, wasn't it? Yeah, because that's when I was away. So that was the last one that I did. It's the same size um, cabochon and that's what I did with the ring so you're learning how to do a peyote bar I better show you the giveaway as well hadn't I okay so for the giveaway this week um, we have a pack of I call them blue velvet they're, they're blue metallic super duos and don't worry if you missed the tutorial Sandra if you go into media and videos it will be in there if you can't find it let me know you've got a tree of life cabochon and a glue and veil size 15 seed beads now i have got two lots of size 15 seed beads in the thread this is the silver lined one which is what i use today um, you've got a little bit of backing fabric you've got um, enough to make two pendants the backing as well and I thought these three beads went quite well. So you've got the turquoise AB, you've got silver and you've got the um, Terra Intensive Blue as well. So that's for tonight's giveaway. So it's really important that you please give me a thumbs up for the top of the post because that's the easiest way of me writing everybody's name ready to put in the, the wheel spinner. I think that's it for now but if you've never watched a tutorial with me before thank you so much for coming for the first time and thank you to everybody that joins every week I really appreciate your being here and um, yeah if you're watching on the replay do pop me a note in the comments as well glad you enjoyed it I'm gonna let you guys go now and I will announce the winner at the top I'll save the details hopefully it'll copy you in but just pop back along later on and have a look at the heading and the winner will be in there thanks for your company everyone take care